Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. Well, today we shall be conducting an experiment to verify the second law of refraction. Before we proceed to that, I would want to bring us up to speed with the concept of refraction. Now what is refraction? Refraction is the bending of light as it travels from one optical medium to another optical medium of varying density. What do I mean? Let's take for instance we have two different medium. We have the incident light, we have our normal, and then we have the light being refracted here. Now refraction is this bending of light as it travels from this medium to this medium. Say this is glass. Here it's air. And we have air here. If you notice, it's not following this path. It's not following this path. It had changed its direction towards this path and it's tending towards the normal. This refraction within this dense medium occurred because the speed of light has been reduced by this medium so it tends to refract or tend to bend towards the normal now for different mediums we have different refracting angle this bending of light towards the normal occurs only when the second medium is more dense or it's denser than the first medium so it means the more optically dense this medium is the more it moves towards the normal now there's a value assigned to the bending of light in various medium because every medium have its own constant value assigned to the extent to which you can bend them. and that's where snail stock comes in Snell's law, which is the second law of refraction, states that the ratio of the sine of the incidence to the sine of the refraction is actually a constant. And this constant is called the refractive index. So what this means is that this value whatsoever value you have here for any medium is the refractive index of the second medium which respects to the first medium so for every given pair of medium we have this formula to hold it gives you just about the same value all the time for those of you writing practical in your excellent exams like WIAC or NECO, um, I want to give you a general idea here behind the practical. So giving you a rectangular block, draw the block. Let's just sketch it out. It's just a rough word, so don't judge me. So, they'll give you the glass block, um, which will tell you to um, sketch it out, or to draw it out on the paper. Next, they will give you an angle of incidence, which we have to place at a certain location. They might tell you, or they wouldn't, draw your angle of incidence. And here's a normal. You 
place two pins, say pin one and pin two. You see, pin one, pin two. Say the angle of incidence given to you is say 30. Remember to indicate your arrow here. You have to label the sides. Of course, they would um, tell you to label the sides, say A, B, C, and D. And they might decide to tag this point, the point of incidence to be M. So you're going to place two other pins, which will be given to you, pin 3 and pin 4, on face DC, that is on this face, you're going to look through this face of the block, right, because it's going to be like this on your paper, so you're going to look through your glass block, right, at this, may take for instance the pin appeared here, so you're having P3, and P4 you be told to just let the line meet um, the point DC All right that here this angle here is going to be your emergence angle uh, let me don't put it here so we we'll move off in. So that's your E, emergence angle. Sorry about the marker. Uh, let's tag this point N. That's this point, the point of emergence. You'll be told to link M to N. Then you'll link both of them this way. In the with your arrow here. At this point, you're almost done, but then they might be very tricky and decide to tell you to look for the lateral shift. The lateral shift is simply the distance between your incident, your incident ray, and your emergent ray. So from this point, from this point of emergence down to this point here, usually we take it from that part, it's called the L lateral shift. We have the parameter spelled out I equals say x degrees, your refracted rate, which is here, R, say y degrees your emergence E equals Z degrees your L equals say P centimeter or let's say let's use Q because they have P here so Q centimeter now with this your you're relatively done because this is where the hard work is. Right. Remember what I said, you place the glass block on here, then the next will give you an angle of incidence, whatever value it is, maybe 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever. Then you have to draw your angle of incidence. You place two pins, pin one and pin two on it. You replace your glass block and look at this point then place your pin 3 and pin 4 such that all pins are aligned which means all pins look like 1 to you so when you look from here when you look from this point you will be seeing all pins as 1 then you introduce the formula sign i of a sign R being equal to the refractive index. So for every value of I you put in here and the corresponding value of R will be here because they've given you this but you have to measure this using your protractor. 
then you get a value put in here you would get 1.5 approximately 1.5 then you'll be told to plot a graph after carrying out repeated experiment now you've gotten this for the first angle of hinting but then the instruction is going to be that you repeat the experiment for different values of i say initially it was at 20 they might want you to carry the experiment out again on 30 they want to do repeat the same experiment on 40 and repeat the same experiment this whole process again on 50 60 as a case maybe but i don't think it should exceed um five times so you conduct this experiment and you have a you have different values of R for every value of I you have a corresponding value for R then you would um, tabulate your readings so you'll be having I R sine I sine R now it depends on what they want you to do so every value of I will produce its corresponding value of r then you would um, get a value for sine of i and then the sine of r here then in the end you be told to plot a graph now the graph of sine i again sign r then all the values of sign i say you carry that experiment five times and for r the same you discover that when you decide when you plot this you will be having a straight line graph you'll be having a straight line graph such that when you plot the slope let's change in sine i to change in sine r will give you this constant and at this point you have verified Snell's law which is the second law of refraction so we can commence the experiment to conduct this experiment we shall be needing once you put your glass block first you have your ruler you have the pencil your optical pins minimum six of them you have your sharpener and your eraser should you make an error so you could clean it up and not have a rough work so let's proceed ensure your papers are firm so you don't have your papers moving back and forth in the course of experiment thereby increasing the error so you place your glass block here, like the instruction would tell you and after doing that you place your protector to find the angle of incidence that will be given to you but i feel it's um it wastes time because when you don't draw in the area for this glass block and a bit to put it back again um it can be time wasting it's because you know what you want to do you know what you want to verify it's snare slow just pick your side draw it take this out so we're going to use this same face because of um, manufacturer's error you don't know when you see it so it's best to retain this face so take for instance the first angle of incidence given to you is um, say 30 now of course because this is um, uh, normal uh, we will make it a broken line Now for this, we're going to do something, and I'm going to tell you why. 
Now you place your, ru your ruler on your incidence because you're going to place two pins on this. You place your ruler on your incidence and we're going to draw it straight down. Well, we should have stopped here. But should they need this? When you look at your question, you're going to know if the lateral shift or the lateral displacement will be required. So it's best you just extend it. Because this might come in pretty handy. Now, other people writing the same exam with you would wonder what you're doing. So, you just pick the angle of incident I equals 30 degrees, because that's what we measured first. Now, with this, we're going to place this glass block, and we're going to Now with this, we are not going to take this out until we are done with the experiment. So let's proceed. Let's place the first one here. That's the first thing on your incident ray. It's advisable to give it a reasonable distance. So we're having two pins already. Now we're going to look through this face. As you can see where the emergent ray or where the ray was supposed to come from so we expect to look within this region we have to bend down close one eye and we're going to use our such pins to look for this light coming in here so you close one eye and you place your pins that way so let's go on with it all pins are aligned remember that all pins are gonna look like one all pins will be aligned okay i think we're done with that so at this point you can take out your glass block take out your pins Now first, we we'll just close this up. Now we're going to link this. To this face. Now, this is your margin. This is the margin ray. Remember your arrows to indicate the ray. So we're going to Put this reproductor back to ensure we are having a right no more. Just to make sure you towel over it so you you avoid errors due to parallax. Here is a margin E. E equals to whatever the value that is. Now remember from the question, here might be assigned a letter. Let's take it to be A, B, C, and D, like we did earlier. Here we're going to target N, and here we're going to target M. So from the instructions you might you might be told to link M and N. So at this point you make it an unbroken line. This our lateral shift from here to this point is our lateral shift. And I can have values now. So let's check. Um, correct is 20, 20 degrees. 
Let's check our angle of emergence. It's about 30.5. You can see 30 is not even up to 1, so it's about 30.5. Let's just put 31. So it's about 31 ish. So to use this, okay, that's about 10. That's exactly 10. So the lateral shift or lateral displacement is 10. So let's spell it out. So these are incident, incident angle. Yes, our um, our emergence. Sorry, is our emergent angle. Here is our refracted angle, and here is a lateral displacement. With this, we are relatively done. The members that require of you right now is to just um, plot a table, a table of I, R, sine I, I, sine R. Now this is a table because you tabulate your readings. Now this is a table you're gonna be plotting for the different values of I. So we have 30 degrees for the first one. That's so we're gonna put our serial number here. So one, two, three, four, five, say five times 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70. I degrees and 70. So the corresponding value of R, we're gonna put it here. For this, we are having 20 right so when we decide to punch our calculator we're going to be having sine i is 0.5 and sine r is 0.34 having done with this you'll be told to plot a graph and you're going to do the corresponding value of everything right you'll be told to plot a graph graph like I said sign I and he said sign I sign R so for every value of sign okay the first one was 0 0.5 0 0.5 then 2 3 4 5 then you have the 1 4 30 0 0.34 like that now you discover that you'll be having a straight line graph two three four five now you'll be having a straight line graph here then in the end you plot your slope so for your change in sine i the change in sine r Putting them out here for your slope, you have in sine i over sine r, which is a constant refractive image. Remember that? So let's put the values in and see that. So let's put the value up here. Sine i. The refractive index is sine i is 0 0.5 and sine r is 0 0.34. On dividing it, we have 1.5. So refractive index equals 1.5. Now this is just for the first one and this has proven it. This has verified Snell's law. Now from the slope you're gonna get this. Even though we just did one, we can see that this experiment into a greater extent is pretty accurate. So it has told us that this glass then this is a pretty good glass. Right. Now we're done with the experiment. So um, 
I believe you can conduct this experiment successfully on your own. Don't forget to ask your physics teacher to give you just a glass of That's just about the thing you need for this experiment. Basically, I think you should have every other thing within reach. But um, you can tell your physics teacher to give you a glass block to work with. Do read and do practice. I wish you all the best year exams. Thanks for watching. Thank you.